Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm in the 1800 block of Druid Hill Avenue where it intersects Warren Street. And behind me is a wonderful mural of six uh, famous Baltimoreans, civil rights leader. Um, up in the upper uh, left, I guess, is uh, uh, some folks who I know you'll know. Um, Thurgood Marshall, the nation's first black Supreme Court Justice. Next to him is the mother of the civil rights movement, Lily Carroll Jackson. And next to her is a gentleman named Tico Lanzi. Now, some of you may know that name, but if you're like me, uh, that was unfamiliar. Well, Mr. Lanzi was one of Baltimore's first black bankers, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We'll get to him, but I have to start with a quick thanks to PNC Bank and my colleague Molly Ricks. Uh, Molly uh, helped with a program during Black History Month talking about the history of black banking in Baltimore, and we're using that same material uh, here again today. So thanks uh, to both of you. All right, let's start now. Not uh, with Mr. Lanzi, but back in 1865, just after the Civil War had ended, Congress recognized that especially uh, freed formerly enslaved people would need access to financial institutions, and they created something called the Freedmen's Bank um, in 1865. Uh, here in Baltimore, we had a branch uh, with folks putting in between $5 and $50. Uh, nationally, the bank took off with millions of dollars in investments, um, but also from the very start was riddled with mismanagement and probably even some fraud. Congress took a look around the country to find somebody uh, with character to take over the bank and they found none other than our own Frederick Douglass to do so. Douglass of course escaped from his enslavement here in Baltimore um, and Douglass uh, uh, managed the bank for several years. Unfortunately the bank did not survive the national financial panic of 1873 uh, and eventually folded leaving a gap in black banking really for 20 years. Um, that was kind of the first wave uh, at the national level of black banking. The second wave came during the progressive era from the mid 1890s to the mid 1920s, an era when lots of social reforms were taking place. In the banking world in 1908, we got our first credit union uh, in New Hampshire. And in 1913, Congress gave us the Federal Reserve, which of course is still going strong. In Maryland, we got our first black owned banks, um, including one of the first, if not the first, which was on the Eastern shore. Um, a, gentleman, uh, a gentleman started it in Salisbury named uh, Melvin Chisholm in 1910. It was called Houston Bank. I'm not exactly sure why. Did not have any connection to the city in Texas that I know of. And uh, the Houston Bank uh, focused on providing uh, banking to individuals and black organizations that had been really shut out of banking uh, in much of the rest of the state. Uh, Chisholm was particularly pleased with his location in, in Salisbury. This is what he had to say. He said his bank was, quote, in the heart of one of the richest farming sections in the middle Atlantic states surrounded by blacks of wonderful possibilities. So that was 1910. Um, in 1911, incidentally, Chisholm helped uh, with a number of other folks uh, create a memorial to Frederick Douglass and Benjamin Banker at uh, the normal school at Bowie, today's Bowie State University, um, starting what became a long tradition of black banking, uh, giving back to the communities that they were part of. Um, over here, here in Baltimore on this side of the bay, um, we had folks like uh, Tico Lanzi um, as one of our first black bankers. He, in 1920, started a bank called Ideal Federal Savings Bank here on Druid Hill Avenue. It was open, curiously, only two hours a day. That may sound odd, but the two hours were on Thursday evenings when, uh, when many black domestic workers uh, had time off to physically go and make a deposit or take a withdrawal. And that seemed to work because it, it was not until 1962 that Ideal uh, uh, developed full banking hours. Ideal lasted up until 2010 when it unfortunately folded, but for 90 years had a long run as part of this uh, black community in West Baltimore. One other progressive era bank uh, was founded by a gentleman named Harry O. Wilson. It was called Wilson Bank. Um, and he uh, he founded it um, in Baltimore in 19, um, 1921. Excuse me. Um, he financed a lot of construction projects, uh, ironically maybe, including the Southern Hotel, which was segregated and did not let black people stay there or eat there. Uh, whatever else, uh, Mr. Wilson, though, made a bunch of money from the Southern Hotel. One of the things he did with that money is create a new neighborhood for wealthy black Baltimoreans, Wilson Park. We did a video on that 
not too long ago uh, featuring his house, which is still standing there. Um, all right, we're going to uh, have to jump to our third wave. There were lots of other bankers in here, but the third wave of black banking came in the middle of the century, the 1950s, say to the 1980s. One of the biggest banks that was started then was in 1957, a Morgan State economics professor named Dr. Winfred Bryson um, started it, and he sort of uh, specialized in lending, lending money to black institutions, particularly churches that didn't have access to white banking. Here's what a friend of his had to say. Almost on any corner where a black church exists, Advanced Federal has been a significant part of its life. Um, so uh, Dr. Bryson did well uh, there for sure. Um, final bank just want to mention is Harbor Bank. Um, it got uh, its idea for it started in the 1960s, a black owned bank that would focus on lending to businesses. Uh, it took a little while for that idea to get going, but in 1982, uh, with a gentleman named Joseph Haskins at the helm, uh, it got its start with $2.2 million of investment uh, and a bank on Fayette Street. Uh, to give some perspective, just over the last couple of years, and it's still going strong today, over the last couple of years, it's loaned out $66 million in uh, federal COVID relief aid. Uh, so uh, quite a, a long growth uh, there for sure. Um, I'm going to wrap up and say uh, that we have certainly come a long way in black banking since the days of Frederick Douglass and the Freedmen's Bank and Tico Lanzi and his ideal federal bank here in Druid Hill. Uh, many will say we still have a long way to go. But next time you're in the area, I encourage you to uh, swing by here on Druid Hill and Warrens, take a look at this wonderful mural, and maybe say a quick thank you to Mr. Lanzi and his banking colleagues for getting us so far down the road. All right, thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.